Welcome everyone, I'm Adamir and this is level 1-7 of Plants vs. Zombies Game of the Year Edition. This is the first level to feature the Snow Pea, which functions exactly like the Pea Shooter with one important exception. It slows any zombie it hits, because it shoots frozen peas, thus the name Snow Pea. Since they cost more than the basic Pea Shooter, they're not exactly a replacement, but having one in each row really helps in dealing with the faster and tougher zombies. If you look at the level progress bar at the bottom right of the screen, you'll notice this is also the first level to feature more than one huge wave of zombies. That's what that second flag there means. We'll be seeing that in due time. But for now, it's business as usual with sunflowers and pea shooters. You all know the drill. No sooner than we have our basic defenses in order, we must turn our attention to the first pole vaulting zombie of the level. Here a quickly placed walnut causes him to lose his pole, buying time to place our final sunflower. Soon our single pea shooter in that row is joined by a second, and they finish him off in short order and with minimal damage. Happily, we didn't have to break out a cherry bomb just yet, for now our attention turns to a conehead zombie. Now is a great opportunity to test out our brand new snow pea, which operates well near the front line so that its slowing shot strikes zombies as early as possible. That means zombies are slower for longer, giving our other defenses more time to whittle them down. And that's the basic plan, at least for this level. Sunflowers, pea shooters, and a snow pea, behind a potato mine and a walnut. I put the potato mines in front of the walnuts this time, because there are going to be many more zombies, and I don't want them to explode just to kill a basic zombie. Putting them behind the walnuts guarantees they'll quickly get rid of the pole vaulting zombies that bypass the walnuts. Meanwhile, everything else will stall and die. The first huge wave of zombies demonstrates the efficacy of this plan. The first huge wave also demonstrates the holes in our defenses, as a pole vaulting zombie charges down the undefended middle row of our lawn. Happily, it's by itself when it arrives, and we have a snow pea on that road to negate its speed advantage. For the most part, simply having two or three sources of damage on each row is enough to hold off threats. Even the conehead zombies that start to show up amid packs of basic zombies fall before they can inflict meaningful damage on our defenses. With the first huge wave of zombies defeated, we may then sit back and slowly fill in the rest of our defenses, starting with walnuts. As the lesser waves of zombies march slowly but steadily to their deaths, we complete our defenses and settle in for the final wave, with only a minor setback, a successful deployment of a potato mine against a wayward pole vaulting zombie in the bottom row. But it's replaced well in time for the final wave, though somewhat superfluous as we deploy a cherry bomb in the bottom half of the lawn. With about half of the final wave destroyed in a single powie, my thoughts then turn to beefing up our defenses even more by replacing pea shooters with snow peas. I could and probably should have done this sooner, because why not beef things up even more? But that's also a bit superfluous, as the final zombie in the final wave dies, in the top row while I'm busy renovating another. We click, receive our reward, a seed packet for a new plant, the chomper, which we'll see in the next level. Hey guys, if you liked this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel. For the next video in the series, click the button on your right. To go straight to the playlist, click the button on your left. I'm Adamir, and as always, thanks for watching.